Okay, let's start. Good afternoon. It's my great pleasure to see all of you here. I'm Zhang Rong. I'm uh, active in six class enough scale. Coop three maintainer, communist member. And now I work for Sunin.com, a container platform R&D center, mainly responsible for uh, container platform scheduling. And today. I'm going to talk about Coop Spray functions, Coop Spray community, and our future plans. And I also talk about the topics that may interest you. First, Let's take a look at the Coop Spray overview. Coop Spray is a uh, cluster lifestyle life cycle project. It's a single cluster life cycle project that uh, can create, configure, and manage Kubernetes cluster. It provides optional addictive functionality on top of core Kubernetes. The mission of uh, Coop Spray is to easily install and manage Kubernetes clusters. Now, let us um, look at Coop Spray in great detail. Coop Spray is a cluster lifestyle life cycle manager. It is a composable, very flexible. It is production ready, and it is based on Ansible. You only need to install. A system, for example, Docker, uh, CLO, uh, RPM package, or Divina. It uh, supports cross uh, platform and uh, cross architecture deployment. And um, our community was established in 2015, and uh, we became a base of a uh, Kube ADM since 2018. You just need to bring your own machine to run Ansible and install Ansible. Then you can uh, deploy Kube Spray. And we are a certified installer of, by uh, CNCF. So this is uh, Kube Spray at a glance. Now let's look at the deployment workflow. First of all, a first step. The uh, uh, Coop Spray OS in the past need uh, to be chosen by yourself. Now uh, you can direct, you can automatically check the OS system. You don't need to choose. So this is first step: boot spread a uh, bootstrap OS. Second is a pre-install. You need to do some checks. For example, DNS or. Uh, Hostname check or network plugin check. If your network plugin is not within a Coop Spray, it will uh, send out alert. So this is uh, pre install. And then you need to install Docker and uh, etcd. And then you need to install master and uh, minion and configure a network plugin. And then you need to install add-ons like dashboard or storage plugins. So this is the deployment workflow for Coop Spray. Usually speaking, Coop Spray is a cluster lifecycle uh, support all cluster lifecycle management. So it supports full lifecycle of cluster operations. Create a new cluster, upgrade cluster, scale a cluster by a scale master or scale node. Node. If you if a node fails, you can remove node, one node or more than one node. Or if one cluster uh, doesn't work anymore, you can remove an entire cluster. By upgrading cluster, it will back up to etcd. So this is functions of uh, lifecycle management. Now let's look at certificate management. 
Coupe spray. It uses Coupe ADM to do certificate management. It will automatically uh, generate uh, certificates. And for ETCD, the names are based on uh, Ventway files. It will generate certificate in the first node. It will uh, generate all certificates in the first node. And then it will check whether a certificate is present on the second node. If not, it will copy to the second node. So it will copy certificate to master to all the nodes. And it will support member, client, and admin certificates. Now let's look at HA architecture. ETCD HA architecture. You use uh, one server. Usually uh, ETCD, if you have a three ETCD, and, and if two fails, then the entire will fail. And then the API server high availability. It supports external LB, for example, cloud uh, LB or F5 LB. Of course, it supports other uh, LBs. I will not go into details. And uh, Copper Spray also support local IB based on NGX or proxy. It can uh, run static pod in Kubernetes cluster. Now let's look at local LB structure. What is the benefit of a local LB? It's uh, more practical and has more e economic value. Whether you use F5 or Cloud LB, you need to pay. But if you use local LB, if you use it uh, at a physical machine or cloud, it's free of charge. So it has a better value for money. So uh, Kube Spray support local LB. Now let's look at the user options provided by Kube Spray, host provider. OS network, certificate management, container engine, Kubernetes features, and deployment mode. Host provider, I will not go into details. OS, we have CentOS, SUSE, Debian, Container, Linux, Red Hat, Redora, Atomic, Ubuntu, network, plugins. It depends on your uh, underlying architecture. For example, Flannel, you can uh, support uh, host uh, gateway. You can put in the uh, use a host gateway to separate the control plan from other plans. Container engine, we support Docker and CRIO, which only uh, support uh, a CRO under Red Hat and kept, uh, kept Kubernetes feature, which include cloud provider, policy security policy, basic author, OIDC, QoS, GPU, audit, log, and uh, proxy mode. Of course, there are other important features. Uh, which are not listed here as to deployment mode for ETCD deployment. If your node, if the number of nodes is more than 2,000, your ETCD cluster will have a, a latency problem. You can uh, divide it into two cluster. One is to store metadata. One is to store ETCD event data. In this way, it will improve the performance of ETCD. HA mode, uh, I've already talked about it. Cross platform deployment. Coops Ray, uh, uh, first uh, support bare metal deployment, which include OpenStack, GCP, and, cloud, and other cloud platforms. 
by Ansible or Terraform, you can set up virtual machine and then return to Coop3, which can uh, set up cluster. And you can also use TK8 tool. It is uh, to, uh, written by Goland. And you can uh, use a TK8 tool. A multi architecture deployment. You can choose ARM, ARM64 or AMD64 for deployment. <laughs> if plugin doesn't support ARM64 or AMD64, well, Flannel should uh, support ARM and ARM64. So you can try yourself using this link. Next, let me talk about Coop Spray community development. Uh, uh, over the past one year, Coop Spray has uh, grown very fast. Now we have uh, 6,400 stars. We have 2,600 folks and 4,400 commits and 450 contributors. Most of uh, which actually um, join us over the past one year. That is, over the past one year, the number of contributors uh, grew by over 200. Now, let me talk about the course of conduct for Coop Spray community. We want to provide production ready clusters. So, all components need to be tested, and all components need to be safe for upgrades. All components are actually ready and scalable and um, minimal comprehensive set of applications. At the same time, Coop Spray is inclusive. All components run on all supported operating systems and container runtime and network plugins can be chosen by yourself. And, uh, it is based. It is an architecture based on Ansible. You can customize your own development. All options are configurable. But defaults are uh, KAS upstream defaults. Coop Spray um, has its own opinion on deployment strategy. For example, it only supports boundary or container deployment instead of RPM package or Demina package. As a result, it will become too complicated or um, not transparent enough. And on promise is the first class uh, choice for deployment. Next, uh, let me talk about um, continuous integration. In the past, we deploy CR on GCE. Well, you know, but now the number of PR has uh, been increasing. So uh, we have uh, uh, got the uh, donation from CNCS and uh, a French company. And open a stack. Currently, our CR has been put in packed up uh, block, which is a provider. We have uh, created a 10 Kubernetes cluster and install Kubewatt. Through Kubewatt, we build virtual machines, and through Kube Spray, we deploy. Uh, AKS clusters and test. Currently, we support six operating systems and seven network plugins, and we support on premise and cloud deployment. And our deployment strategies include all in one, separate host, that is a separate Kube master, ETCD, and Kube node. Coop master and etcd are deployed on one node, or they can be separated. And next is a HA deployment. And also, 
the upgrade, the graceful upgrade and the non graceful upgrade. And that is the CR. And then, if you use Cube 3, the process is improved by a lot. We can run a lot of tests, for example, uh, Yamlin and also the Ansible Lint. And also now we have the Shell and Peasant and also Terraform. All of the uh, parameters can be set in the Kubernetes, Kubernetes node default. Uh, it can be set, set there. And for the long-term contribution, for example, we have uh, added new OSs and also new network plugin or new storage plugin. If uh, if it's a plugin that only work on a single OS, we don't accept that. And also Helm charts, we don't accept that. The deployment of Helm charts, for example, if you want to install an EFK or other software on the production cluster. You cannot just use one step to uh, satisfy all of the requirements. It's impossible. So now for Cube 3, Cube 3, uh, it's more about the lifecycle management. And if you submit a feature, for example, the network plugin, then you can add your name to it and you maintain it. If nobody maintains that, and if it's faulty, then we may waste it. <coughs> then for Cube Spray release, uh, we support it like this from 2.0. In the past, we only have the master branch. We only maintain the master branch. For the other branches, well, they are not that stable, for example, 2.7, 2.8. And later we will support the 2.8.1 or 2.8.2 as long as we, uh, if we have bugs, we can fix them ourselves. And also we can use, uh, we can fix the master branch bugs. And if you want to renew faster, you can tell us, and we can just release it uh, pretty fast. And then let's talk about the Cube Spray, Cube Spray uh, community in 2019. First, we supported the Cube ADM experimental control plane. It's provided by Cube ADM community, and it's the mask function and node uh, local DNS. That means for every node, there is a local DNS. It's a new project. It is the DNS local cache. It is uh, more about, uh, it is the function of uh, service discovery. And also we have the HA proxy load balancer. And also we support ARM now. And we have Lin clear in Linux OS support. And also we support the local path provisioner. And then for CI, we support the kubervert to create VM and then we uh, return the RP to kube spray then they uh, the kube spray would deploy and then on OVH it's based on OpenStack so we use that to test offline environment and also the OpenStack environment we use Terraform to create VM to let it drive the Kube spray and also we have the KDS conformance and as for roadmap this is the roadmap now for a lot of the options they're not that transparent and documentation is still a weak link we hope that the configuration is more transparent or we can make them into parameters and we want to support the SIG and uh, the upstream 
community, for example, the QPDM component config and ATCD admin. So for QPDM or ATCD admin, you know that for component config, it's for the configuration of each component. This is not fully released into the community yet. It's just that somebody in the community mentioned this direction. For kubeadm, if we want to deploy, you need to have this class in class configure and crop proxy and kubenet. Uh, you configure those. That is uh, recorded in the config configure map. And if you manage a cluster, then class config, there are 200 or 300 lines of uh, config files. It's hard to revise. So if there is the component conf config, then it's programmable. It's more transparent. And then the maintenance can be tighter and easier. Then the decentralized orchestration it is to speed up the scaling and also it supports now the automatic scaling and also it, we support multi arc and uh, CI <coughs> this is the Spray community you can use Slack GitHub or WeChat to contact us. And this is the channel group of uh, WeChat of uh, Cube Spray. If you want, you can scan it. And you can ask questions, and I will try to answer them. You don't support auto scaling? Kubernetes node scaling. Do you support that? Yes, but you need to manually add them. When you add the nodes, the kubelet installation and so on, do you need uh, people to install that? No, it's automatic. Okay, so as long as we add the node, then we run it, we run the Ansible, then there is a new machine? Yes, and it's uh, automatic. Right? Yes. Really? Yeah, yeah, you can try it. Okay, thank you. Wait, 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 wait. I I'm not done yet, actually. So, an interesting topic. Do you think Kubernetes, uh, Kubernetes uh, uh, deployment is slow? Yes, it's slow, but uh, acceptable. Three, 30 minutes. How many nodes? 10. 10 nodes, 30 minutes. Because when you download it, you need a lot of time. So, so Amazon, it's, it's okay, but in China, it's even uh, unimaginable. So I can give you some suggestions. For example, you can have a bigger memory, and also you can have the Ansible node uh, near the target nodes, and also you can choose low latency machines. And also, when you deploy, you can deploy master nodes first, then the other nodes. You can use the limit or retax. And also, now we support control plan. And it simplifies the process. So that is the top, that was my topic. So if you want, we can discuss it. And there is another thing about managing Kubernetes in air gap and offline environment. So, actually, if you want to ask, ask questions, it's not limited to my presentation. Thank you. It is the Ansible script. Okay, it's uh, Ansible script. So it's a command line tool. There's no API, right? No API you can uh, implement an API. So all of the operation is based on command line with parameter to uh, upgrade or scale up, right? Yes. Okay.
I'm a user, I'll have three questions. First, tube spray. Can it pack binary? Uh, you can it can download binary packet and other things. But in UCR.io, what in China you cannot access to it. So how do you deal with that? Yeah, yeah, you can listen to my next topic. How do we? Yeah, actually, there is this uh, operation. For example, we can download it to OneNote. Yeah, yeah, we know it. So there's the delegate option, but there's the problem. The delegate node, when it's downloaded, it's a slash temple, a temper. Uh, so one day later, the temp folder is cleaned. So we need to re-download it. But we know the uh, volume is quite big, so there is no valid option to put it in a very good folder. That is the problem. Now speak into the microphone. So the binary files and the image, do we have the repository in China? Yeah, yeah, maybe under row. There is a folder, all of the links, you can just change it to the accessible in, the, in China. But we haven't found that, but maybe you can talk about that later. And also, if a node is lost, for example, it's, it's down or it's uh, deleted by fault, then in the infantry, if we want to change the infantry, will the script, the script will fail in running. So what do you do? So we can just try to use remote load and then we can reinstall it. Can we do that? So you uninstall first and then you reinstall the cast ADM because in it there are some files that can cause the installation to fail. For example, if one node is missing, then in infantry we just remove the line of that and then we run the uh, removement, uh, the uh, run the road again, right? Okay, the third, SIG cluster lifecycle. Uh, do you have anyone doing the uh, Ali Cloud and to integrate Hatchi Kerberbot bot? in the in the system no nobody yet for ali cloud we don't support that yet but if you're interested you can just have one pr to try to fix that any other questions i have a question so did you use coop spray to upgrade of course when we upgrade with it, uh, we have some pain points. We had four clusters being upgraded by that, and uh, the other key uh, cluster is very important, so we are not that trusting it. So, for example, for the grid for upgrade, uh, for when it's downloading the uh, image or YAM, it can hang there. If the uh, time is short, it may just jump ahead. I remember that there was this uh, 15 plus 3 master node we upgraded for 4 to 5 hours. We have to wait there, we cannot do anything else. Yeah, somebody asked that. Because we want to switch to maintenance mode for that node, and sometimes it can evict some pot, it can consume some time. Yeah. So if the apps have different replications, you can just uh, don't consider it and remove that. You mean manually switch it to maintenance? Yes, we can remove the undrawn processes. Because if you uh, switch it to remove a bot, uh, then it can evict some parts and then it takes some time. Yeah, it, it can have some impact. So I have this experience. When we upgrade, sometimes the image or YAM pack can be downloaded with Ansible with some node. Then we can use Cube Spray to uh, upgrade the Cube cluster. Then the uh, time can be saved for downloading. But entering the maintenance mode is really time consuming. Thank you. One minute left. Anything else? I have two questions. Because when we use groups, right? Yeah, we are using it, and we have a big cluster, so it's performance related. One is the HA mode. When you use node blocking, 
So how much, how big? You may every node has the NDS proxy, right? So actually, in OpenStack community, somebody tested, we can support 2,000 nodes. 2,000? Yes. Tested. Yeah, you've uh, mentioned uh, ETCD and event ETCD should be separated to improve performance. You can separate ETCD and uh, event ETCD. And uh, I did that before. It seems uh, ultimately these two ETCD could only be put in one node because uh, uh, K8 API server could allocate one certificate. Yeah, the same a certificate is the same. You use the same certificate for two ETCD clusters in the same node? Yes. Two ETCD are put in the same node or using one ETCD for the same node. It seems it cannot improve the performance of one node because you run on the same node. Yes, but if you have 2,000 nodes in a cluster, uh, you can have one ETCD for metadata and the other is for event. It will improve the read and write um, speed and also improve the uh, performance. Can we put it in two nodes? If we put it in two nodes, it can improve. But even if we uh, separate them, we still put it in one node. Yeah, currently, we can only put it in one node. Thank you.